Pediatric neurology and adult neurology are totally two different areas. The family social system, which we are so proud of, that we are a combined family system, usually breaks down. In a world of boundless potential, where the smallest minds strive to make sense of the vast complexities around them, we uncover the incredible journeys of children facing extraordinary challenges. Welcome to Little Brain's Big Challenges. What unique challenges and considerations are involved in diagnosing and treating neurological conditions in children compared to adults? Disorders, neurological disorders, like any other uh, condition, be it um, hematology, oncology, or endocrinology, pediatric neurology and adult neurology are totally two different areas. Um, so for example, if you have stroke in adults and you have stroke in pediatrics, it is not the same. Stroke in pediatrics needs to be investigated. Um, it is not because of hypercholesterolemia, hypertension, diabetes. 90% of the cases, it's either cardiac, uh, where you have a cardiac condition, which causes um, a clot to go into your brain, or it is because of a vascular malformation, or it may be some inherent genetic condition which causes the individual to have stroke. Similarly, epilepsy. Epilepsy in adults is not the same as that of pediatrics and uh, it may be as simple as ABC to as complex as the whole 25 letters of your uh, ABC. So pediatric should be dealt with pediatric uh, by a pediatrician or a pediatric neurologist. Adults usually are not aware of underlying genetic uh, conditions, underlying conditions which lead to the neurological disorders in pediatrics. Can you share insights into the emotional and psychological aspects of caring for pediatric patients with neurological disorders, as well as supporting their families throughout the treatment journey? One child with a neurological disorder disrupts the whole family system. There's stress, there's anxiety, um, financial burden. Um, we don't have a good uh, healthcare system. We don't have social welfare services and therefore the whole burden falls on the mother. Um, the family social system, which we are so proud of, that we are a combined family system, usually breaks down. The support is not given by um, family members to the mother. Usually it's the mother and, and the father, because the father is the breadwinner. So the, the physical work and the anxiety and the emotions that the mother goes through needs to be supported and understood. And she is not just dealing with one child, she is also dealing with the stigma with the society places on this family also. So um, it needs a lot of help and support. How does pediatric neurology intersect with other pediatric specialties? And what collaborative approaches are taken to provide comprehensive care for children with complex medical needs? We have uh, developed over the years, uh, not just pediatric neurology, but we have specialization in pediatric uh, uh, endocrinology. We have uh, pediatric hematology oncology. We have a specific intensive care. We have neonatology. So it's a collaborative work. Um, so when you are on service, for example, you get consults from different areas, from the general pediatrics to the intensive care, neonatal team, uh, because these problems are um, across board and you need the support of your different colleagues to help. Unfortunately, that is not the case in a large uh, percentage of centers in Pakistan. Uh, we do have good centers in Lahore, uh, Multan, uh, developing hopefully in KP, but Balochistan, we don't even have pediatric neurologists or any other specialist in that area. We just have general peds. Can you discuss the latest advancements in pediatric neurology research or treatments that offer hope for improving outcomes and quality of life for young patients? Every day is a new day. 
And uh, since the past five years, there have been so many new medications that have come out, just to give you an example. There's one neuromuscular disorder, which is the commonest in Pakistan, which is spinal muscular atrophy, which is called SMA. It's actually, if you have it in a newborn, uh, it's a death sentence. The child does not survive beyond one year, maximum two years of age, if you have the type one. Uh, they go into respiratory failure, the muscles fail, and the child dies. There is a drug, in fact, there are three drugs available now. One is available in Pakistan. Yes, it is very, very, very costly. But considering the fact that life doesn't have a cost to it, one, uh, there are options, there are ways to get that drug. There are ways where we can get support for that individual. However, my colleagues in general peace would argue with me that if children are dying of malaria and nutrition, malnutrition and diarrhea, why would you want to spend money on a disease which is a genetic condition. So there are two thoughts, two ways that you can think about it. But yes, Duchenne, which is the commonest neuromuscular disorder, has got available treatment now. And so there are there is a potential for newer drugs coming in. And every, as I said, every day that I open up the Google and I look for an option for a disease which I did not know had a cure, now has a cure. As our journey through Little Brain's Big Challenges comes to a close, we reflect on the incredible strength, resilience, and determination displayed by the children and families we've met along the way.